Okay guys, welcome back to another video. I'm going to demonstrate APSX's Spider CNC machine. It's a desktop CNC machine and that's used in conjunction with their desktop injection molding machine for rapid prototyping and limited production runs. I'm starting out making a keychain. I'm going to make a keychain with my logo on it. It's going to be injection molded in uh, polypropylene plastic. But what you see me doing here, I start in Illustrator. I just want to show you my full process. In Illustrator, I have a representation of the cutting head I'm going to be using. That is 1 32nd of an inch. That's how small that circle represents. And I'm dragging it through my logo to make sure that it cuts out everything because the negative shape of the logo, not necessarily the words, but the negative shape between the words and the border are all going to be milled out on the Spider desktop CNC machine. I export it as a DXF, and when you export out of Illustrator as a DXF or any other drawing program, the DXF will remain sized when you import it into Fusion 360. It'll remain the same size, so you don't have to resize it. Some people have problems, and if you use anything other than a DXF, you might have some importing problems. The sizes will be different. Now, I'm no expert here. I learned quite a bit this week doing this project, um, fumbling through it, learning on the job. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to represent the cavity. Of course, in Fusion, you do your drawings, and uh, I had to do my cavity and I had to draw a bounding box around it that's going to represent the cavity right there you see uh, the cavity now is cut out of the aluminum and that represents one inch by four inch and the cavity depth is one hundred thousandths of an inch and off camera I made my cutting paths it took some time to make the proper decisions and I'm gonna have a, a roughing pass with an eighth inch mill and that's what you see happening right there in the simulation in fusion that's the eighth inch mill. I sped it up for time. And that cut took about, about 20 minutes. We did it a couple of different times. We kept, we broke the bit twice, but I was able to use it because we broke the shaft off the bit. And uh, a couple times it, it plowed and stopped, but I didn't want to show any of that because it's kind of unnecessary. I'm telling you the truth now. <clears throat> and then you see the second milling operation. In Fusion, it's called the rest milling, meaning it rests it mills out everything after the initial clearing. That is done in that 1 32nd bit. This took 30 hours of milling, and I'm not going to show you 30 hours of milling, but I'm showing you the simulation and fast forward so you could see what it actually did. And so once we did a test cut in plastic and we tried, uh, we, we went into the aluminum. Now here we are setting up the desktop CNC machine. That's Aaron. He works with me in my shop, and Aaron is like my wingman. He really helps me figure out a lot of these things here. And what we're doing is, that is all mold. We had to surface that little plate just so everything was in the proper plane. And we're putting in our first cutting bit. And that is the mold. That piece we just bolted in is going to be the cavity. We're going to put a cavity in there that's going to be the keychain. Fob. And this is for me, I'm just experimenting. I know the keychain fob isn't anything groundbreaking. For me, it's sort of a tradition. Anytime I run a machine for the very first time, I use my logo. It's just a, a little way. There's certain nuances in the logo that are challenging, and it helps me understand the machine. So right here, this is our eighth inch bit, and you'll notice from that edit to this edit how much shorter the bit is. It actually broke a couple of times, but it broke in the shaft, not in the blade. So there is our roughing pass. And now with the 132nd bit and a 30 hour cut path, I start the milling. You can see how fine that cutting head is. And because we left the machine alone, we turned the compressor off and just flooded that with oil. I didn't want the compressor to continuously run. And there you see now this represents probably 20 hours after that initial cut that you just saw. Just filled that up with motor oil, 10W30. And every once in a while, I kind of flooded it out. So now this is 30 hours later. I blew it out and wiped it off. And now we're removing it off of the tooling. And it wasn't perfect, but for me, it was a huge success that I didn't break the second bit. The bit was 132nd. And that is the 
the cut. Now, I'm on a manual mill here. I'm on like a grizzly manual mill I have in my shop, and I'm cutting the gate. This is going to be the gate and the sprue. And I'm digging in a little bit of a deep hole there, and then uh, I'm going to make a path. That is the injection port on the desktop injection molding machine. And that is where it will be. There is a, a front and back half of the mold. This is one side of the mold. You'll see the rest of it in just a minute. And now that is the gate. That's going to be the path that the polypropylene follows once the injection takes place. First time using this machine. First time using this CNC machine. And I, like I said, this was for me was a huge success. This is the first time I ever milled anything this small. It was very intimidating for me. I uh, consulted Tony Rouleau. Tony does really fine milling on logos and stuff and, and a couple of other my friends and uh, studied quite a bit with John over at Saunders Machine Works and also Lars Christensen. Now what you see me doing is I did not put a draft on this mold. There's going to be a lot of comments in the comment section. You didn't put a draft. I didn't have a bit that small with a 10 degree cutting head. So you see me, I polished it with a file first. I, I put a tape on it with a file. Then I used number seven polish and a wooden stick. And I also used some steel wool. And that was just to maybe take out any burrs, smooth out the inside there. And now you see Aaron just preparing the machine. That's black polypropylene. And this is the APSX desktop molding machine for rapid prototyping, limited production runs. And it's an amazing machine. I've worked in the toy business for many years, and we would run machines like this the size of two school buses. And it's amazing to have one the desktop size. And that hopper there is filled with black polypropylene granules, and we're just getting the machine set up and started. And it takes some time to, for the machine to heat up to 210C. And uh, while the machine is heating up, we're going to drop the mold in there. And you'll see those alignment pins. If you do get involved in this system, the molds are available from the website. And of course, uh, you can also mill your own molds. And so, yeah, you tighten the mold in place. And the machine needs to get up to, in this case, I think we were running at 215C. That's about 400 something degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, take some time once you get the, the machine set up. Now, the first couple of test shots are going to have clear polypro in it. You see it squirting out of the relief valve there on the machine. This is when it finally gets hot enough. This is our first test shot, and we were just getting acclimated to the machine. Now, that's the first test shot in clear. We had to run a few shots to get the clear out of the system. And uh, once I started running, it took a little bit of playing around, uh, but we started getting pretty good results right away clamping pressure and injection pressure and how much is in the uh, the injection port all these settings are there on the machine and you make a shot you test it you make a shot you test it and once you start dialing in a recipe that works for that mold and that cavity size we just take a, a cell phone picture of the screen so that when we shut the machine off and we turn it back on so now me and Aaron got into a little system here where we were injecting and then pulling out the part. The part didn't come out very easily. Obviously this is sped up so you don't really see us wrestling with it. But if I did have a taper, I did order some 10 degree bits and the next mold cavity I make, I'm going to have a taper on it and these pieces will pop out a lot easier than they did this time. As it was, we were cycling probably about a minute per part, maybe a minute, minute and a half per part. So that's about, that's about 50 parts per hour. That's pretty good. If I had to laser cut those, I could never make those as fast. And they're made out of polypropylene, which is an unbreakable, indestructible plastic. Now it's flexible. You could see the net result. Again, my fusion file wasn't so perfect, so my, my roughing pass and my fine pass weren't at the same exact zero. That's all human error, and that's just experience. In time, I will be able to develop a, a nice finishing pass that would clear up all those squiggly lines. Now, this is the machine, just showing you the machine opening and closing in fast forward. And you can see what happens every time you run apart. That 
big spring closes, it sets the pressure, and then the injector inserts the melted plastic. And this is my finished part. I was real proud of this. It, it might not look like much, but what it took to get there was a tremendous amount of learning and accomplishment. As far as me and Aaron are concerned, this was a huge success. And like I said, next, my assignment is to come up with something a little bit more important than my logo keychain. I want to try and make a, an actual interesting part that's going to mean something to mankind. And these are all going to be keychains ultimately available on my website. You can go to my website, jimmyderested.com, for this and some other swag, my ice pick, and a few other things will be on that website. Thank you very much. And thank you to the team over at APSX for letting me test drive these machines. I had a great time. Thank you.